Justice can be given a second chance. Be my guest. How do you make money for nothing? Oh, that looks very sporty. The answer could be hiding in the 30 million tonnes of household waste we throw out every year. Can I take this off your hands? That would be fantastic. That's why designer Jackie Joseph wants to get her hands on things before they hit the skip. That looks interesting. I'm a fashion designer turned upcycler with a keen eye for style. I take old, unwanted and abandoned things and transform them into on-trend treasures. And then I sell them for a profit. And with some of the country's elite designers and makers... I come bearing a gift. Really interesting. Whatever we do needs to pack a punch. She can transform her finds into desirable... I have never seen that done before. You're good. Valuable... No. Incredible. And hopefully saleable items. I just want to go to that. <laughs> if Jackie is successful, yeah. then she can hand the profits back to the very people who had no idea there was cash to be made from their trash. Joking. You are joking. the High Wycombe Recycling Centre in Buckinghamshire, the locals are playing the age-old game of how much stuff can I fit in my motor, then give it the heave-ho into the skips. But recycling superstar Jackie Joseph is here to pick up rather than drop off. This is what I like to see. Car streaming in, car boots flying open, because for me, every single car boot is a potential gold mine. Jackie has special permission to scout the site. What are you throwing away today, then? For things that have the potential to be sold on for a profit. But her opponent is formidable. This is what I'm up against. Sarah and Mia have arrived. Will Jackie think their rubbish is worth saving from the crusher? Hi, this looks very interesting. My name's Jackie, what's yours? Sarah and Mia. Sarah and Mia. Nice so what are you, to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Are you sisters? Or... No, mo mother, mother and daughter. daughter. <laughs> People very often say that. <laughs> so tell me about this, this cabinet. Is it, is it yours, Sarah? I've just done a clear out from my mum's care home because she passed away on Monday. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear about your, your, your mother. That's OK. Really am. How did your mum use it? My dad's ashes were in there. Oh. And, um, yeah, just really sentimental. Yeah. bits for her that when she moved to the care home five years ago everything was put in there so that she could see it every day but this right. was kind of her pride and joy to keep all of her sentimental items in yeah but so the this had to go were never allowed to open the doors oh, <laughs> no never allowed in there <laughs> in case they broke the glass doors yeah. or anything it's yes. simple but it's got potential to be given a new lease of life We'd love that, wouldn't we? That would be lovely. If I'm able to do something with it, I'll come back and I'll show you. Is that Perfect. all right? Yes. Yeah, lovely. I shall be back in a second with a trolley. Perfect. Thanks very Brilliant. much. Thank you. Jackie's first find is a display cabinet. You pleased, Sarah? My dad was very thrifty and he would have been saying, don't chuck it, don't chuck it, someone else can get some use out of this. And um, He'll be smiling away, he'll be so pleased. Yeah. It's not oak or mahogany, but I think this can sing again. It deserves to be given a second chance. So who does Jackie think could be perfect to deliver that second chance? It's sisters Katie Stone and Sophie Lawrence. Luxury upcyclers or lux cyclers. Katie and Sophie specialise in taking dull furniture and lavishing it with their bright and bold designs. We are sisters yeah, and best friends. And together we luck cycle furniture. Sorry, sorry, sorry again. I gave you a dirty look when you said that. Am I not your best friend? Oh, of course you are. We would describe our job as, as a lifestyle. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a hobby and a passion. We literally live, breathe, sleep, eat wallpaper, yeah. fabric, Weird. colour. It's what we love to do. But will Katie and Sophie have that loving feeling when they see the old cabinet Jack is sending their way? 
with one item in the bag. Come on, people, let's have your rubbish. Jackie needs two more. And you know the old saying, one man's... Hey, one man's junk is another man's treasure. It's actually trash, Jackie. But, yep, that's the spirit. Gerald's arrived, but will Jackie spot any potential bounty in Ooh. his boot? This looks, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Mega. Mega. <laughs> it does. Uh, my name's Jackie, what's yours? I'm Gerald. So is this yours, Gerald? Yeah, it's my grandchild, and it was uh, for putting little toys in and things like that. It's been outside for about a year. How long has it been in your family? Oh, crikey. Gee, mm. must be about... Ten years. Well, I really, really like it because it is solid. Still, it's, there's nothing. Oh yeah, yeah. There's wobbly. nothing wrong with it at all because I push it about. It's solid. Yeah, it's a solid, solid piece. I zoomed in on this because I saw that you had that steely determination to throw it in there. I did. I know. I. <laughs> you followed I could me see up. The steely you followed me look. up here. Yeah, <laughs> you did. <laughs> but would you mind, um, instead of it going in there, if I take it? Of course you can. It's a freebie. It's oh, yours. Thank you very much. Because what I'll do, Gerald, is I will keep in touch with you. Yeah. And if I'm able to breathe new life into it, right. I'll come back and I'll show you what I've done. Is yeah. that OK? Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, perfect. I love it. Thank you very, very much. Oh, oh, it's quite heavy. It is with the drawers in. <laughs> thank you. Jackie's just about managing to make off with the blue chest. Any thoughts on what she might do with it, Gerald? Strip it right down, and you can either varnish it, the whole lot of it, and stain it, or paint it the colour that she'd like it. Ah, uh, sounds like a plan. I know, the veneer is all lifting, but it's still a solid piece, and it's useful. So there has got to be a way of turning this into a profit. And Jackie knows just the maker to hopefully bring out the best in this little chest. It's Martin Huff, a furniture designer with two decades of experience under his belt. Martin's eye for creative detail means he consistently turns out terrific pieces of furniture. I guess it all really started when I was very young um, and I was very lucky to have a shed with tools in it, which was my dad's. And as I was old enough to sort of be allowed in there, then I, um, I, was, I was in there. Ever since then, I've been making stuff. Recycling and reusing is, I think, is very important. It saves it from landfilling and gives it a new home. Martin loves a repurposing challenge, but will this chest put even his skills to the test? With two items saved, Jackie has her eyes peeled for something she can work on herself. Oh, that's looking very clean. I've missed everything, haven't I? Yeah, I have. Oh, my gosh, what a shame. Charles has pulled in. But will Jackie see potential in what he's chucking? That looks very interesting. Hello. Hello. Hi, my name's Jackie. What's yours? Mine's Charles. Charles, lovely to meet you. There seems like a lot of fabric here. Are these yours? Just, just two curtains. Are they really, really long? Are they...? Well, that's... Oh, wow. Uh... That's a lot. It seems like a lot of fabric there. Oh, my goodness, Charles. There we go. Wow. OK, and so how long have you had them for? Probably only about three or four years. Three or four years. And did you have them specially made? Yes. So why are you throwing them away now, Charles? Well, we've actually moved house and they don't serve any purpose anymore for us. Can I take the curtains off you, Charles? Absolutely. That's amazing. I'm going to reach in and grab them, Charles. Okay. Oh, I am so happy. You made my day. Oh, my gosh, they're quite heavy. They are. Wow, lovely. Thank you so much, Charles. I'll be in touch. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Jackie's saved a set of handmade curtains. What do you think she'll do with them, Charles? I would imagine she would probably trim them round and do some upholstery or something. OK. I've got to just think really carefully about this one. Whatever I decide to do, it's just got to work with the design. Let me have a think. And with that, Jackie's search is done and dusted. Sophie and Katie could have a huge challenge putting the old cabinet back on display. Transforming the water-damaged toy chest will be anything but child's play for Martin, while Jackie's job is to somehow come up with a creative way to repurpose the curtains. 
It wasn't easy, but I got there in the end. Three cracking items saved. Now it's time to make them shine. In Folkestone, Jack is en route to Katie and Sophie's shop, where they've already taken delivery of the display cabinet. What do you think, Kate? Wow, I love it. Whatever we do, it needs to pack a punch. Something quite glamorous. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it has been well used, well loved, but it's in a sorry state. Wish me luck. Katie, Sophie. Hi, Jackie. Hey, girls. I see you've received the cabinet. What do you yes. think? It's a smaller piece than we expected. Mm. It is small and it is made of chipboard, but it's actually really quite sturdy. Yeah, it's well made. Yeah. I was thinking a really decadent drinks cabinet. It's a nice size for a drinks cabinet. Yeah. And we're thinking glam, so... Black, Black, gold. And then at the bottom there... We're thinking making this whole part at the bottom gold. I love it. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot that's going to be going yeah. on. It needs to be small but mighty. So what about the budget? Is that going to be small <laughs> or mighty? <laughs> <laughs> You're the budget person on yeah. this one. There's a lot of work involved. Yeah. So I'm thinking 250. 250 sounds fair to me. I wish you luck. We can't wait to get started. No. Nice to see you as always, girls. And, and you, Jackie. And I'll see you soon. Yes. Bye. Bye. It needs to be glam and gorgeous. So if we can inject detail everywhere we look, then yeah. it should be fabulous. Katie and Sophie have £250 to turn the display unit into an Art Deco-inspired drinks cabinet fit for a glam cocktail bar. But can they really turn this old-fashioned into a Manhattan? The Oxfordshire countryside is where Martin has his workshop and where Jackie has sent the little blue chest of drawers. But has the water damage left Martin feeling blue about his chances of saving it? I think it's fair to say it's seen better days. Um, I really like the blue. It's probably because it's one of my favourite colours. I think it's going to make um, a nice upcycled piece. We'll see. Hi, Jackie. How are you doing? Oh, I'm really good, Martin. Are you are you OK? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, yeah. Just standing here in front of this lovely chest of drawers you dropped off for me. What do you think of it? I rather liked it. It's seen better days, I think that's fair to say. Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, the top of it, but I thought it could kind of stay as it is, as the unit, and then just be given, like, a, a sort of breath of fresh air with, with colour, or maybe have strip back the top and have that, that the bare wood and then colour on the rest. What were you thinking? My thought was to replace the top, um, mm. to replace the handle, so a single handle would be quite nice. And then some new legs, I think. I want to give it almost a, a bit of a sort of Japanese kind of feel. Um, so have like an N-shaped leg that then sits on top of two other um, bearers, which you'll see the end grain of. Sounds like it's going to be given a modern makeover with a twist. Yes, yeah, totally. That's what I want to aim to do, a modern makeover with a twist. What are we talking money-wise? I mean, I've looked at it and I'm going to budget 160 for it. OK, that sounds really fair, so thanks yeah. for that. The 160, it's a deal. I'll see you when I come to pick it up. Will do. Great. Nice to talk, Jackie. Take care. Yeah, you too. You will do. Martin. Take care. Thanks. Bye, bye. Cheers. Bye, bye. We'll end up with a very modern style chest of drawers. Chop the legs off, make new legs, sort of an end shape front and back, paint the side panels and the front of the drawers and sand back all the oak and oil it. We'll see if we can pull it off or not. Martin has a budget of £160 to put a Japanese-inspired twist on the water-damaged chest. But will he be able to deliver his ambitious plan or will it be a damp squib? With her makers ready to get making in London, Jackie's about to get to work on the handmade curtains. What I'm thinking 
Why not make cushions? And if I use my own plain fabric on the back, I can get more cushions out of these curtains. Having already given them a wash, Jackie is taking the curtains apart to see just how much fabric she has to work with. Gosh, there's a lot of unpicking to do here. Better get to it. After I do a few unpicks, I should be able to let it rip. <laughs> Very satisfying. She's having a rip-roaring time. I've got heading off, all of that's off, the lining's off. So we've got all our panels now. After a quick steam with the iron, Jackie's ready to get cutting. She wants to create generous, comfortable cushions. And to try and maximise the curtain's profit-making potential, she's planning to use every inch of the fabric. That's great. That's our first two done. Let's see how many more we can get. Jackie's using a rotary cutter to slice through the material. It's kind of like a pizza cutter, but for fabric. Although you can cut pizza with it too. Really? Has someone tried that? So how many slices of the old curtains have you managed to serve up? So I've managed to cut 30 cushion fronts from the curtains, but two of them didn't make the grade. So in fact, I've got 28. There's just too many holes in that one. I've cut all the backs as well out of fabric that I already had. And now I'm just attaching the zip. So I'm just pinning the zip in place. Great. So. This is cushion number one. It's time to sew on that zip. Cushion one of 28. You're going to be here all day, Jackie, and on your feet, no less. I quite like standing up when I'm sewing. I don't know why. And what I will do is then bring that zip out of the way. Jackie's using a zipper foot attachment which allows her needle to stitch along the raised edge of the zip. Right. Perfect. So, then the next stage is to add the trim. And I've decided to go for the cotton furry trim. I just thought the colour looked really nice. With this trim, always make sure you add some tape masking tape, cellar tape to the ends because it will unravel and you'll be just left with a mess. Oh, we don't want that. Jackie needs to produce as many neat cushions as possible. Oh, my thread's finished. So far, Jackie spent £30 on zips and trim, but with 28 plump cushions to create, she's still a long way from having this project sewn up. In Folkestone, Katie and Sophie are hard at work getting to grips with the glass cabinet. I'm going to need a little bit of help with this one. The old door brackets are stuck tight. Let me do it, cos you're going to damage the glass. But they'll need to work as a team if they're to turn this old thing into a luxe drinks cabinet. Teamwork makes dream work. You're so cheesy. <laughs> do you want me to prise them out yeah, a bit? that one's off. So in the bottom are some runners where there was a set of drawers, so we need to take the runners out. For some reason, these runners have been stapled in. Little monkeys. Go on, girl. <laughs> <sighs> Can you pull? Just pull. Go on, girls. One, two, three. <laughs> With the runners defeated, Katie and Sophie are filling in the bracket holes with wood filler and sanding down the carcass in preparation for painting. We've gone for a really dramatic black, black and gold, which will hopefully inject some character into this rather plain cabinet. 
Art Deco design was all the rage in the 1920s, with greens, blues and pinks amongst the most popular colours of the era. So their black paint might not be the most obvious choice. Are you sure about this, so? Yeah. Black's my favourite colour. <laughs> to wear, anyway. How's it looking? Bad. Well, it's on there now, Katie. That's all right, just a thin layer all over. The water-based paint isn't masking the orange chipboard as they'd hoped, yet. Definitely going to need a couple of coats. Katie and Sophie told Jackie they'd add some decadent gold detailing, and to do that, they're using sticky back plastic. Regretting this decision to use this stuff. <laughs> And the pressure's on Katie to make sure it looks pristine. So nervous for this. Why are you nervous? Because if I get it wrong, I have to peel this off and use another piece and start again. She's got one shot to peel and perfectly position the metallic-looking plastic. It's really stressful. Just calm down. <laughs> so it requires patience, which you don't normally have. Lift. I know, that's why I was dreading doing it. <laughs> Katie needs to make sure it's stuck down squarely and snug to the surface. Mm, there's something under there, lift. A bubble. OK. With no imperfections. Three more to go. That's beautiful. That was exhausting. I have literally just done a workout with some sticky back plastic. That's how I feel. But I'm really pleased with it, so I've just got to do it a few more times now. To tie in with the gold bottom section, Katie and Sophie are using a metallic gold paint to highlight the cabinet's details. So you're doing it quite shabby then. I thought you were going to block paint that no. gold. No, who's got time for that? All I'll right. Be, I'll be there for three hours. Sophie and Katie have promised Jackie a glam drinks cabinet that's anything but shabby. But they're some way off actually pulling off their Art Deco-inspired vision. At his Oxfordshire workshop, Martin is turning his vision for the little blue chest into a sketch. So, yeah, it's going to have this kind of, like, floating feel to it. With the legs sitting on top of these two barriers, you're going to get a visual separation. So, yeah, it should give this idea of it floating. Oh, cool. Now you just need to make your ambitious plan a reality. First up, Martin is removing the bottom brackets to make way for a new base. That's been a right pain. Already? You've barely started. But firstly, I'm going to take the legs off. Just makes my life a little bit easier. Martin is using a Japanese pull saw to try and achieve a flush cut. It's going to look much prettier once I've finished with it. Let's hope so. Next, he's cutting out a piece of plywood that he's temporarily affixing to the cabinet to act as a guide for the recess that the new base will sit in. Nice and flat. Right, let's give it, see if it fits. He started from the bottom, but now Martin has to deal with the water-damaged top. Just try not to ruin this any more than what it is. There you go. <laughs> That's not too much damage, is it? I was really lucky. Much better than I expected. I was thinking that this thing was going to behave like this piece is doing. <laughs> <laughs> Got a couple of big nails through here, so there's one there and there's another one there, so... Draw two holes here. <laughs> Trying to drill round a nail so that I can try and get the thing out. Yay! There you go. So hopefully there's no more in there, cos otherwise it's gonna hurt the saw blade. If there are any more hidden nasties, they could not only damage the saw blade, but the cabinet carcass too. But luckily, Martin has got everything out. Next, he's cutting out the new top, made from oak veneered medium density fiberboard, or MDF to you and me. 
and I'm going to clash it with some solid oak around the edges um, just to give it a little bit more thickness. But for the oak edging to look pristine, it has to fit seamlessly to the new top. Martin is using a biscuit joiner, which notches holes that wooden rods or biscuits slot into before being glued tightly. Personally, I prefer to use jam or cream to join my biscuits, but each to their own. Happy with that, uh, just as a dry run, just to make sure that everything um, pulls up nice and tight. Just want to have a look at what it looks like on the top of the drawers now. So it's fitting nicely. Um, just to point out, I'm going to put a bevel on the bottom of the edge of this before it gets glued down, um, just to give it a, a, a more of a Japanese feel. Martin's hoping the addition of a floating base will give the Oriental-inspired look he's aiming for. So is cutting down offcuts that he'll attempt to create it from. That should be all right. But will it be enough to elevate this chest in more ways than one? Back at her London studio, Jackie is plumping up the curtains come cushions but has she managed to produce 28 as planned? I think I've ended up with some really plush, sumptuous and hopefully saleable cushions. When Jackie found the curtains, they were so well made she couldn't bear to see them go to waste. So now... She has produced a substantial set of scatter cushions. Thanks to the quality and quantity of the material, she's managed to stitch 28 plump pillows. The red Aztec design makes for a bold print on the front, and Jackie's added a cream backing fabric to each. The removable covers are stuffed with generous hypoallergenic cushions, and Jackie's finished each one with a fluffy burgundy trim in the hopes of adding some extra detail. She's sewn her socks off to try and maximise the use from the mountain of fabric. But are they stylish enough to be saleable? I am so happy with how these cushions have turned up and I'm really pleased I managed to get 28 out of those curtains. I sort of made the orientation of the design um, go across because I think that makes it look a lot wider. But all in all, I'm really, really happy. When Jackie met Charles, he decided it was curtains for his curtains. So why are you throwing them away now, Charles? Well, we've actually moved house and they don't serve any purpose anymore for us. I really, really like them. Jackie could see their potential. I'll be in touch. I'll be, thank Bye. You. Bye. And Charles had some ideas of his own. She would probably trim them round and do some upholstery or something. Not a bad guess, Charles. They're now a collection of stylish cushions. After sharing pictures online, four were sold to a furniture shop in Corbridge, and owner Nikki loves them. My customers will really like these cushions. They're something different, and that's what they're looking for. Another set was snapped up by Matt at a boutique holiday cottage in Lyme Regis. These give a nice pop of colour and really lift the room, so, yeah, they're, they're perfect. But did Jackie find buyers for the rest? She's in Maidenhead to show Charles the transformation and hopefully hand over some cash. Hi, Charles. Hi, Jackie. Lovely to see you. How you, are you? You too. I'm very well, thank you. So, the last time we met Charles was obviously at the recycling mm -hmm. centre and you were about to dispose of curtains that were... In the, in, the, in, in the old house, didn't fit here, didn't have a use for them, so just took them away. Did you ever wonder, oh, my goodness, what is Jackie going to do with the old curtains? And I don't really know, just sorts of things which could be made, just some little canvassy things, or maybe a bag or something. I don't, don't really know. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was actually something I took on myself. Uh, would you like to see yes, what I've done with yes. your old curtains? Very, very nice indeed, yes. Oh, good, so very you approve? Nice. I certainly do, yes. <laughs> yes. And obviously you still recognise them. Oh, oh yes, I do, I do, yes, yeah. 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 So I was able to get 28 cushions. Wow. 
out of it. Wow. So, I've got a little bit of profit for you. I've got £161.92. Blimey, thank you very much. That's, that's good. So, what might you do with that money, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, a nice meal or something, or something for the house. That's lovely. But, look, thank you so much for allowing me to take your curtains. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very thank much, you. Charles. It was lovely to catch up with you again. It's lovely, thank and you. And you never thank know, you I might much. see you back down at the recycling centre. You may well do. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Jackie spent 158 pounds and eight pence transforming the curtains. The cushions were sold for a total of 320 pounds, meaning Charles has a profit of 161 pounds and 92 p that he's going to spend on a meal out or something nice for his house. With one sale under her belt, Jackie's in Folkestone to find out how Katie and Sophie have fared with the old display cabinet. There wasn't a masses of surface. of surface to work with, so we wanted to make sure that what we did do on the surfaces was going to pack a punch, so... So hopefully we've done that. Yeah. Although the old cabinet I left with Katie and Sophie had been well used and well loved for many decades, it just wasn't looking its best. But I still thought it had potential. Now the girls promised me a luxurious makeover. I'm hoping to be dazzled. When Jackie saved the storage unit, it had been much cherished but needed cheering up. But now... Katie and Sophie have reimagined it as a decadent drinks cabinet. The carcass has been transformed with coats of black paint to try and create a bold look. And hand painted gold detailing has been added to accentuate the Art Deco styling. The plastic covered shelf didn't work as they'd hoped, so instead they've opted for a botanical wallpaper. The old doors have been removed to try and give the small and mighty cabinet a more open feel and make it the perfect place to prepare a cocktail. And the addition of an Art Deco style light fitting means that drinks can go on long into the evening. But will Jackie love the bold new look? Katie, Sophie, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Honestly, I cannot believe it. That is never the same cabinet. And look. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> wow, was, I, I'm literally speechless. <laughs> but then, hold on a second. It was going to be, like, all gold at the bottom. Yeah. We talked about sticky back plastic, yeah. which has worked for us before. Mm. Um, but once it was in, it just simply didn't match up with the other gold that we were using. That's wallpaper, yeah, that yeah. you've got? That looks so stylish. Yeah. So glamorous. <laughs> I love it. Would you lift up the top you. of it as well? Because you've got the same paper there. Yep. So we've put the same paper underneath here, just so it's a bit of a surprise when, when you mm. open it. Wait, there's something missing. The, the doors. doors. <laughs> we knew you mentioned the doors. <laughs> um, we ummed and ahed about it, We did ummed and ahed. But... It was more... We really wanted to do this piano hinge-style top, and when that opened, the doors would have just... It just didn't look right. No, it didn't flow, and so... we thought for a little drinks cabinet, it would be better to have it all open. And I like that you've highlighted in the gold, cos that looks amazing. Someone's in for a real treat here. <laughs> <laughs> what did we say? We wanted to add all the bells and whistles, so tassel, hinge top, and we're happy with it. I left you with a budget of £250. How did we do on that? It was tight, but we, we kept to it. Thank you so much, girls, and well done. It looks amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Bye. 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 Oh, yeah. we couldn't ask for a better response no. from Jackie. She's made me love it even more, actually. Yeah. yeah. And it makes all the hard work worth it. Yeah. At the recycling centre, Sarah and Mia were unloading a cabinet that caught Jackie's eye. Hi, this looks very interesting. It had belonged to Sarah's parents and held many memories. On the glass shelves, she kept um, my dad's ashes were in there. Jackie was keen to save the cabinet from the skip, and Sarah thought her dad would have been on board too. He would have been saying, 
don't chuck it, don't chuck it. Someone else can get some use out of this. He'll be smiling away. He'll be so pleased. Yeah. But did the old cabinet that was close to the family's heart find a new home as a drinks cabinet? Jack is in Marlow to catch up with Sarah and Mia to show them the cabinet's new look. Here as Mia's well. here as well. Oh, how are you both? Yeah, we're good. good. We're good. Oh, lovely to see you. And lovely to see you too. The last time we met, you were literally, Sarah, moments away from throwing away a, a cabinet. Yeah. But the cabinet didn't belong to you, did it? It belonged to your mum, Mia's grandmother? Yeah, my late mother. She'd passed away on the Monday and we were getting rid of the cabinet on the... Thursday morning. Yeah. I gave it to two amazing girls, their sisters called Katie and Sophie. Would you like to see what they've done? Oh, yes, please. With yes. your mum's cabinet. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely <laughs> love it. Oh. I'm almost getting a bit oh. choked up because when I was a little girl, one of the first wallpapers in the house was very leafy and ferny like that in the 70s. Oh. So that design is kind of coming back yeah. to sort of a memory. Oh, I'm so glad that you love it, you yeah. know. I'm, I'm so pleased. Well, I'm really pleased also to say that someone else loved it, and I have got £300. Oh, my <laughs> <laughs> That is oh, so much more stop than it. I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> that is just unbelievable. I just want to give it to charity for Parkinson's. It's really dear to my heart. And but... £300 will make a massive difference. Yeah. So. I'm so pleased that you love it. I shall see you maybe down at the recycling centre again. Yes. You never know. <laughs> Thank you. You never know. Thank you. Take Thank care. You very much. Thanks very much, Jack. Take Bye. care. Bye. 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 Katie and Sophie's costs came to £250. The drinks cabinet was sold for 550, leaving Sarah and Mia with 300 pounds that they're going to donate to a charity that supports people with Parkinson's disease. With two salvaged items successfully transformed, Jack is in Oxfordshire to see if Martin has managed to make it three out of three with the little blue chest. I think I've managed to pull off a really nice piece of furniture considering what it looked like before. It had a lot of water damage, but I saw the potential in it. Did he manage to save it? When Jackie rescued the little blue chest, it was a shell of its former self. But now... Martin's Japanese-inspired redesign has given it a fresh new look. The original top has been replaced with veneered MDF, edged with solid oak. Martin used the original legs to create angular draw handles, with sycamore sandwiched between the wood to try and give it a sleeker appearance. For the brand new base, he's used offcuts to create elegant legs that make the chest look like it's floating. The carcass has been sanded back and the sides have been painted in a dark blue to contrast with the blonde wood. Martin set out to revamp the chest while retaining some of its original character. But will Jackie be impressed with its contemporary new look? Martin? Hi, Jackie. My word. Hold on a second. That's not the same little light blue unit. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, you couldn't believe it, could you? I cannot believe it. Hold on a second. Let me let me visualise again. OK. Because that base, that's what makes it really, really unique as well. It's got a very nice, different kind of shape about it. Basically, what I did is I chopped off the two little legs, and that's what the handles are made out of. And the thing was, the legs weren't long enough to cover the two holes. So this is where comes the idea of cutting them in half and spacing them apart. So you have a handle... Well, with a gap. Oh, that's so clever. You brought it right back to the bare timber, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love this sort of dark blue with oak. The combination always works really well. I absolutely adore it. It is lovely. Are you pleased with it, Martin? I'm really, really happy with it, yeah. I left you with a budget of 160... 
How did we do on that? Unfortunately, I went a little bit over budget there. Um, came out at 190. I hope that's OK. Just unfortunately, it took a little bit longer than I thought. 190, very happy. Martin, thank you so much. And I'll see you very soon. Take Thanks, care. Jackie. Take Bye. care. See you soon. Bye. You always have this idea of what it's going to look like in your head. Um, I think this time I've managed to pull it off. Yeah, it's great. It's great that Jackie's pleased with it. When Jackie spotted Gerald unloading the old chest, she wasn't quite sure how to describe it. Oh, this looks... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Mega. Mega. <laughs> it does. It's my grandchild, and it was uh, for putting little toys in. It's been outside for about a year. Jackie thought it was worth saving, and Gerald had some ideas of what she could do with it. You can either varnish it, the whole lot of it, and stain it, or paint it the colour that she'd like it. Well, thanks to Martin, it's been given a second chance as a modern storage unit. And after being advertised online, it was sold to a shop in Gloucestershire. Owner Jonathan is delighted with it. The drawers fit in really well with the shop. The styling suits what we do, the colours are great and the overall finish is really high-end and just what we like. Jack is in Marlow to show Gerald the chest's new look and hand over the profit. Hi, Gerald. Hello, Jackie. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? It's nice to see you again. Uh, lovely to see you yeah. again. Something that you were throwing away was a, a blue chest. That chest had been in the family for quite a few years, hadn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's what it was, it was put outside and then uh, the top got wet and then it started lifting a little bit. I actually took it to an amazing furniture designer and maker called Martin in Oxfordshire. I think you might approve. That is beautiful. It's like brand spanking new. Can I have it back? <laughs> oh, my, that is lovely. I can't believe that's the same one. That's like you've just got it out of a shop. It went to Cheltenham because it was sold to a lifestyle shop there. So I've got for you, Gerald, £120. Profit. Pardon? <laughs> I don't believe it. So, Gerald, what might you do with that money? Well, that'll go to me daughter and she more likely give it to the grandchildren because it was my daughter's and then the grandchildren had it, so it's up to them what they would do with it. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. It was lovely to see you again. And you. Bye. Bye. Martin's costs came to £190. The drawers were sold for £310, meaning Gerald has a profit of £120 that he's going to pass on to his daughter and grandchildren. Jackie saved three items from hitting the skips. The curtains have a new calling as stylish cushions. The display unit has been given new spirit as a glam drinks cabinet. And the old blue chest is totally revitalised. I gave Martin, Katie and Sophie items that were about to be ditched. And with some clever creative thinking, they produced unique transformations that have breathed new life into my old items.